Hey guys, Christian Duke from strengthaddicts.com. We're here with your 1996 IFBB North American champion, John Simmons. We're here at Novi Powerhouse. John, thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, if you don't mind, we were talking earlier about bodybuilding in the 90s. So even before we start talking about when you turned professional or uh, when you started dominating these national shows, what was it like bodybuilding early 1990s here in Michigan throughout the country? Well, early 90s, you know, I, me, honestly, I was a late bloomer. I actually got into it, you know, at a later age than most guys did. Um, I was in my late 20s before I, when I started to compete. So for me, um, to know exactly what I wanted to do at that time, because I was, was a little older, I was more mature about it, so I knew exactly what I wanted. And I, I got started with doing it um, for the simple fact that uh, um, I was in powerlifting in the beginning. I started out powerlifting, okay. but I had to look a bodybuilder. And so my brother said to me, you know, you're strong, but you look like a bodybuilder. Maybe you ought to consider that. Right. And I, after giving some thought, that's exactly what I did, you know. And the very first show that I went, went into was in, in 1987, um, Mr. Highland in, in, in the city of Detroit. And um, in those days, you know, they, had, they gave up best parts plus the placings. So wow. I took best arms, best abs, and I came in fourth. Wow. In my first show. And how old were you then for that show? I was 27. 27. Yeah. Wow. You know, it's whereas most guys just started when they're 20, 21 years old. Sure. You know, sure. and then from that point, I took a couple of years off, and after that, um, I came back and did the 1989 Central States okay. at the Redford Theater, and from that point on, I won that show, won a light heavyweight, and I won the overall, and that's what put me on the map. That's what made me become a national name figure-wise once I went to the uh, Junior USA the following year. I went to the Junior USA and like heavyweight division and won my class, you know, my first time there. And um, after that, you know, your name starts to build up a little bit as a national, on the yeah. national stage. What, so that's what, what really set it out for me. What was your support system like back at these, at these contests? I mean, like, was your family, like, hardcore behind you, friends, sponsors, uh, local gyms? Like, what, I mean, was it, was it uh, something that was all your own, or were there a lot of you know people backing you? Well, up? I had a lot of great support, <clears throat> and that was coming from me. I was you know at, from the gym. People knew me. I was pretty popular about it. You know, people would always come behind me and give me a push whenever they saw me in the gym. You know, family was 100% behind me. They come to see me at all the shows. They supported me. Um, the job, you know, um, I had a lot of good support behind me. You know, as far as uh, giving me motivation, giving me the drive to say, go ahead and do this. You know, mm -hmm. this is what you really want to do. But more than anything else, it was a, at that point, it was, I was driven. You know, I had made up my mind that regardless, this mm -hmm. was going to be something that I was going to do. I didn't know how far I was going to go with it. Right. But that's what really got me over the hump, you know, saying once I became, uh, set my mind to doing it, you know, that was it. Nothing was going to stop me from doing it. And actually, um, it being one big circle of support from friends and family and the drive that I had, so that made it pretty, it made it pretty significant, pretty good for me. So you win Central States, you win the overall, and then you're suddenly introduced to the national scene. Um, what are some of those early national shows like? I know there was 93, the USA, but, it, but even before that, like what, like how, how did you go from uh, the local level to the national level? Was it a big jump for you? Or? Yes, yes, it was a very big jump. <clears throat> from there, as I said, I went to the Junior USA is in, in uh, New Jersey, uh, which is on the East Coast. Now the East Coast, uh, New York, at that area, you know, that's pretty tough, pretty yeah. tough, pretty tough market. But um, I was fortunate enough to be in enough great shape where um, I could hold my own against some very popular guys that uh, at the time were from, from that area that were pretty good mm -hmm. and had been there a few times. And I went there for the very first time and I won my class. So to do that in that area that is so political, you know, that says a lot. Yeah. You know, that kind of opened me up to my eyes about not only did, I, did it re make me realize that I could probably do, my, do very well here, um, it opened me up also that these guys are very, very competitive. And now mm -hmm. I know that if I'm going to continue at this, you know, I've really got to bring my A game here sure. from, you know, from this point on out. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, we, a lot of times we hear about political or politics with bodybuilding and sports, but, but uh, it's not always like, a, like, a, like a, a bad thing. It's just, you know, for instance, in bodybuilding, you know, we were talking earlier, you have the Gold's Venice crowd in New York, you know, Lou Ferrigno's from New York, you know, now Bev Francis, they call that the East Coast Mecca, but you're from Michigan. So, you know, you're up against all of that. You know, and on top of that, you know, you, like you said, you were a late bloomer, so it seemed like everything for you was uphill, so yeah. a challenge, you know? Well, yeah, you know, 
that being said, you know, of course, it, you always heard about California. Yeah. You know, Gold's Gym, Venice Beach, that mm-hmm. was a that was the hot spot. Right. And, you know, in those days. I mean that was that was it. You know, that was a that was a that was a, where everybody was from. And then too, you heard about the East Coast, Lou Ferrigno. Oh, jeez. That's okay. That's all right. We'll we'll just keep going. Okay. You know, yeah. Lou Ferrigno from the East Coast, <laughs> these guys like that. Yeah. You know, and um Gaspari, you know, these guys, East Coast guys, you heard about these names mm-hmm. of these guys, you know, these guys were were, were notorious, you know, big names. Right. You know, but being in the middle, you know, we didn't have as much publicity, we didn't have much clout, you know, but we had some good people that came from this area, Ron Love, mm-hmm. you know, Linda Murray, you know, that really made it big, you know, and we had some other uh, top name people that actually went to the national level and did pretty good, you know, yeah. so we held our own, sure. we just didn't have the high market market value that they did, right? you know, but it was, it, we held our own, but um, when you put that in a nutshell and, and put it into two the cents of our national show, right. okay, who's going to get more publicity, sure. East Coast guys, and the West Coast guys, mm-hmm. because that is what you hear about all the time. Right. So you really had to bring your A game if you're going to be competitive against these people. And so that, at that Junior USA, like, um, I mean, I, I'm sure you could tell us about your placing, but well, tell us about your placing, of course, as well. But but tell us what was it like, you know, at the backstage, the pump up room, getting up on stage, uh, the fans, just you know, I'm sure it was probably the biggest crowd that you'd seen up until that point. Uh, if I'm if, unless I'm mistaken, like, yeah, what absolutely. was all that like? Yeah, absolutely. It was so you know, it was like it was like coming from. Uh, um, a high school play, you know, and going to a, some major opera right. scene, you know, that was a big jump. Cameras, lights, action, mm-hmm. you know, you saw all the sports vendors, all the magazines, you know, right. you know, and then you saw, you recognize people that you saw in the audience, you know, you recognize people that you see in magazines mm-hmm. at all these shows, you know, and then <clears throat> you look at the audience and you see six, seven hundred people, you know, whereas coming from a local show, you have two or three hundred, right. but, um, it was like going from the country to Hollywood, you know. Right. You know when you get to that level, and it was very intense. Mm-hmm. But, but it was, it was exciting. Yeah, but it, it sounded like you you were you were there. You were like you were gung ho. You, you like you knew you were bringing a good package, and you know you were ready to go. So yeah, I'm sure it was it was cool to see all this. But I don't think you were necessarily like nervous, right? Like you weren't like shaky or anything. Like no, this was... no, absolutely not. I, whenever I went to a show, you know, I, I knew that I would. I've always took the very best that I could. You know, there was never a fact of, of uh, intimidation, mm-hmm. or never a fact of being nervous. You know, the, the most nerve I had was the idea of now I'm at a higher level. You know, right. I've really got to bring it now because this is it. You know, not to say that my confidence wasn't the same. I just wanted to be so perfect and have my A game on so tight that when I did walk out there, you know, they would remember who I was. You know, that was a, more of an issue for me than anything else. Mm-hmm. You know, but once I got there and knowing that the fact that uh, I'm here, you know, you settle in a little bit, you know, you're there to do your job. Right. And that's, you know, it's time to do it. So talk to us about that, that 93 USA that I was, we were talking about earlier when you won the light heavyweight. Uh, if you could, uh, just uh, in the interest of time, because I have so many questions for you. If you could talk to us about that 93 USA and of course, turning professional in 1996, because both of those, and I think you did a national show also, but, but, but talk to us about that because... You know, there's so much to talk to you about when you go pro. Well, leading up to that uh, 1993 um, USA in California, the year before, I had did the show previously. And um, that year, I came in third at the okay. USA's. So that gave me a sense of what I'm dealing with here. Mm-hmm. You know, And that year, Flex Wheeler won the overall. And John Sherman won the light heavyweight. So. From that point on, when I walked off the stage, I said, okay, all right, I'm going to go back and do the same thing, mm-hmm. but this time when I go back, mm-hmm. I know that I'm better, I better come a little bit, I better bring it for sure this time. Sure. You know? So we had a little bit of a break there, but so we're back here with IFBB Pro John Simmons. We're going to talk about that 1993 USA where you won the light heavyweight. I think you were also going to tell us about the show right before it, yeah. and then also when you turned professional in 96, right. just to kind of get a... A perspective for all that. Okay. Well, leading up to the 1993 victory, as I, you know, uh, there was a show, the USA actually, um, I had done the year before, which was very competitive also, which was in California. And um, I placed third in light heavyweight. Flex Willow won the overall, and John Sherman won the light heavyweight division, which has also become a top professional at the time after that also. And um, it, that show was very competitive. And at that point, you know, when I made the decision that I was going to do the USA, you know, 
Um, knowing that the USA is probably the second best show in the land, okay, and I had made my mind up that this is something I better do. So I knew for a fact that if I'm going to do this, I better do it right. Uh, despite the politics that you hear about, despite all the right. things that you, you know could go wrong, even though you may be right, you know, so I did it. And with the, the knowledge of the previous victories that I had, which were in my corner, you know, which I think is what made me uh, more of a political figure as, as far as politics goes and nothing, anything else as far as people know my name, I think that's what really propelled me uh, to get the exposure that I, that I had for that show. So with that being said, it wasn't a major disappointment at the 92 USA, but I knew that I could do better than that. So the following year, I came back again to the 1993 USA's, you know, mm -hmm. but this time this show had a different twist. You know, once we got to the show, the only thing that you heard about was Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier this, Chris Cormier the real that, deal. Yeah. Chris Cormier this and that. So you got to read between the lines of what's going on here. Right. You know, so um, me not being completely naive about what the situation was, I said, okay, I understand which way this can go. And there's a great possibility that it will. So the only thing that I can do now that I'm here is make sure that I am completely ready that I'm completely polished and do the very best that I can do. That's all. It's, I have nothing else to go for, and which is exactly what I did. And and in my opinion, and in some other people's opinion, it wasn't an easy victory for him, you know, because we had to battle down to the last second for the overall. Even though it may have been a political victory in the end, right. you know, him being a home hometown born, and everything. I don't know that, but that's another that's another issue. Right. <laughs> but he did win it. But I did win the light heavyweight class in that division. They got a lot of great exposure. People were saying that I don't know. Maybe things could have been a little different here and there. And that's all I needed to hear. Mm -hmm. You know, that it could have been, it could have went the other way. And that made my day. It was a great show. Uh, I know Chris very well. He's a good champion. He went on to do great things. But, you know, um, those shows that, like that is what really sparked me and said, okay, you can do this now. Now you're on your own. You can continue to do better at this. Now, now tell us, uh, going from that 93 USA to that 96 North America, well, actually, there's a national show in between that, right? Yeah. yeah. After that, that, that victory, though, at the USA, you, you probably felt like getting the pro card was a foregone conclusion. It, it wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. A question of when, absolutely. It wasn't a question of if at that point, after the USA victory. You know, it wasn't a matter of, 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 of whether I would get it or not. You know, right. at that point, I just had to pick my shows right to make sure, to ensure that uh, I made the right moves to get it, you know. Right. So uh, from that point, I went to the Nationals. Um, and they helped the Nationals that year in uh, Pittsburgh at the State Stars and Stripes. And um, I think, in my opinion, that that was probably the toughest national show that I've ever seen or ever been in. And that, sh that show was star-studded, I mean, from top to bottom. Kevin Leveroni um, won that show. Um, Puerto Contreras won the light heavyweights. Wow, yeah. Uh, Paul DeMeo was third in the light in the heavyweights. Flex Wheel was second. No, not Flex. He's uh, already pro, yeah. You know, um, uh, Barry DeMeo, one of these, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, yeah. um, these guys who were in that show, I mean, it was stellar from top to bottom. I know in the light heavyweight in my division, there was uh, Porter Cottrell won the light heavyweights. Daryl Stafford was second. Uh, John Sherman was third. I was fourth and Bo Matlock was fifth. And all these guys turned pro in a matter of time in that class. So um, even, in the, even in the heavyweight class, that when Kevin won that show that year, you know, I think everybody in that, in that show turned pro except for one guy. So that was a very, very steep and a very, very tough show. But to make the top five in a show like that, you know, Absolutely. would really say that, you know, hey, you know, you can, you can do this. You can really hold your own against these guys like that. And of course, you kept your name in the press by doing that as well. Absolutely. So. Once you get to that point where you get your name out in the press that way, you want to make sure that you stay on it. You know, mm -hmm. because that's the only way they're gonna you're gonna get better at what you do, get more publicity. You know, you become more politically inept with the with what's going on. You know, right. they may not know you. All they have to do is know your name and what you what you've accomplished so far. But but tell me one thing though. Like, uh, I I don't know if it was different then, but the, at the nationals, the class winners all get a pro card. I don't know if it was different then or not. No, it was it was different then. Okay. It was different then. Um, you 
the you didn't have to get a pro card. Some issues they didn't give lighter guys didn't not necessarily win a pro card. Okay. Sometimes if you were a bantamweight or lightweight, it didn't necessarily mean that you got a pro card. I guess the reason I asked too is because I'm, I'm trying to figure out what possessed you to do North, uh, North American because I think they only gave one out total. Right? Yeah, they only gave one out total. One out total overall. Yeah, so it's actually in a way it's probably the hardest way to go pro, right? That was more of a harder way than anything else. Yeah. And the reason being now, let me tell you why, because um, at that point. Uh, I was still a light heavyweight, but my body was starting to change. My body was starting to grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could no longer see myself trying to make the 198 pound limit anymore. Okay, so my body was telling me, "Hey, it's time to ease up because it's getting tougher and tougher to make that weight class." Mm -hmm. So I had a guy that was working with me at the time. He was saying, "Maybe it's time for you to move up." So after the nationals, the North Americans was coming up in nine months later. So I went from 197 in contest shape from that show to 217 in contest shape for the North Americans. So as soon as I went to, to heavyweight and went to the North Americans, there it was. And that's what happened. And that's what that's what got me over the hump. I went to the North Americans in, in uh, Saskatchewan in mm -hmm. Canada. And nice and cold. Once I got there and I saw exactly what I was dealing with, I, I felt so good about it. After the first round of being on the stage, I said, okay, I think this is it. I think this is my time. And sure enough, you know, one time doing the heavyweight class, and it was all over. As soon as I went to the heavyweight issue, that was it. And I turned pro in 1996. There's something about Canada, though, that seems to, Canada seems to like you, because then after you turned pro, you did two shows in Canada, you placed top ten, and, you know, those were pretty big shows. I mean, I looked at the at the contest placing, and it had something like 20, 25, 30 yeah. people. There. Canada, was, Canada was good for me. Yeah. You know, I spent a lot of time there. You know, I, I used to go back and forth there and train with a lot of guys there. You know, I was well known in that in, in Canada. Yeah. So, you know, my first pro show actually, um, Milo Sarshev won it. Yeah. Uh, Chris Cormier was second, and um, uh, Gunther was like third or fourth. So these guys were, were pretty stellar. Now, my very first one, I came in ninth. Yeah. You know, I made the top ten in the very That's first. That's really pro show. good. That yeah. was really good considering yeah. there was thirty guys in that show. Yeah. You know, so I, I was very pleased. I wasn't very on. I wasn't. And 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 on top of that, there's thirty guys in that show, and you're not from Canada. So yeah, you got right. that on top of yeah, everything right. else. Considering that half of the top ten yeah. were Canadian guys, and don't mm -hmm. get me wrong, they were very good. Yeah. Claude Grew was in it. Yeah. You know, you know, I think he was like a couple of spaces ahead of me, mm -hmm. but you know, which in my in my opinion was a very good bodybuilder. Absolutely. You know? So you know, it was very very rewarding for me. You know, I felt real good about it. Okay, uh, I do have to ask you though, uh, during your pro time, uh, we're going to just fast forward to like another decade, but you did the 2006 Masters Pro World, I know we talked about that earlier, the big Bob Chicarillo show that was really hyped up, uh, another show with a lot of uh, 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 big guys, big quality guys, um, again a good placing for you, another top 10 placing. Um, I guess really what I want to ask you is, is was it like you know, uh, doing battle on an IFBB stage as opposed to a national MPC stage. Like, how how is it different? Like, how is it how is it more demanding or crazy or more intense? Well, it's more intense, quite honestly, on a national level. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it's not as political. For one thing. Okay. Okay. See, that's the difference. Okay. Okay. Now, you could have a politics behind you on a national level. Yeah. Okay, but depending on where you are. And who's sitting down in front of you? Mm -hmm. Okay, doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna say you're gonna be a shoe in for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, not, that's not necessarily true. Now, on, on a professional level, that's a whole different issue. All right. Now, in terms of uh, being on the stage at that Masters World Olympia in that year, okay, the attitude of some of the guys there were, um, I'm here to do battle, but yet I can see what's happening here too at the same time. Okay. You, you think maybe there was a little bit of that back in that show with Chris Cormier where you kind of saw the writing on the wall, you, you know, you just kept hearing Chris Cormier, Chris Cormier. Maybe for this show you kept hearing Bob Chicarillo. Yeah, absolutely. The very same thing, yeah. you know, very same thing. Nothing against Bob personally, you know, but, you know, I'll leave it up to a viewer's eye point to look at that and see what they think about it. You know, mm -hmm. you'd have to be there to see uh, and feel exactly how things were, you know, how as, as far as how they went, you know, right. but... Um, Politics plays a major role sometimes, you know, in this sport, and it all depends on who you are and what you've done. Um, so, as far as that show went, you know, even though I was in great shape for it, you know, and honestly, and I think I should have probably done a little bit better than that. Not saying that I should have won it, but I know for a fact that I should have done better. But as far as the 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 way it was run, 
Okay, you know, you can we can debate about that all day long, but as far as the politics go, absolutely, they were they were definitely there for sure. Mm -hmm. And that's just put in a nutshell. Sure. When you went, also another question to kind of you know go backwards a little bit. When you went pro, was there ever any part of you that wanted to make the move out to Venice, or were you always a Michigan guy? No. No, I had no idea. No, no, no ideas or nothing that would want to wake me, make me just up and uh, go to California as far as a pro scene goes. You know, I was living. Even though I, I turned pro, I never gave up my livelihood that I had. Okay, you know, I had a pretty good thing going. I had a pretty good life other than bodybuilding, and I never got away from my other my other life. Even though I turned pro, like some guys did, you know, right. they, they they concentrated on that exclusively. You know, I didn't do that. You know, I had a good career going with uh, with training and with uh, with work. You know, I was a, I had been a policeman at that time for like 10 years. Oh. You know, so I had a good career going. So it wasn't about a, an issue of up and just leaving. I had the best of both worlds. Awesome. You know. So whenever I needed time to get ready to compete, they worked with me. You know, did everything they wanted they wanted me to do for a show. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about that. You know, it wasn't about stepping off and not knowing exactly what I was getting to just to, just to make a move to California. Absolutely. You know, so and, and and in the long run, it worked out better that way. Okay. Well, I want to thank you very much for taking the time. Our interview is about 20 minutes so far. Everybody's going to watch it from beginning to end. I'm sure of it. Um, tell the fans how they can find you. We're obviously here at Novi Powerhouse, but. Uh, Facebook or Twitter or dot com, anything like that. Yes, they can. If anyone wants to get in touch with me, they can easily find me on Facebook, mm -hmm. or you can email me at jsjakejr at gmail, or you can just simply Facebook me, and I'll be more than happy to answer questions or whatever you need from me. Absolutely, I'll, I'll put that on the video. Thank you very much, IFB Pro John Simmons. Yes, sir.